Hi, welcome to another session of circuits and networks. In today's class, under transient analysis, we are going to see the initial conditions of inductor and capacitor, especially involved with parallel circuit. So I have selected here two examples of parallel circuit. As you can see, this is a voltage measurement across the inductor or resistor across switch as well as the current source. So the current source when it is going to deliver its energy to resistor and inductor through switch. How does the transient behavior is obtained? That is what we are going to see in first example. And then in the same next example, we will replace inductor with capacitor and we will see the transient analysis. So in the first problem, in the network shown below, the switch S is open at t equal to 0. Means what? The switch is open and when the switch is open with zero initial conditions, we need to find V dv by dt and d square v by dt square at t equal to 0 plus. So we need to find the conditions when the switch is closed as well as open and we need to find out the values of voltage, the acceleration of voltage along with the velocity of voltage. So how do we solve this problem? So we need to find out the value of V across two Henry's or across 50 or across switch since the voltage in the parallel circuit remains the same. So that is why V it is shown here it is parallel to all the passive elements. So let us go with the solution. When the switch was closed because in the problem it is given that the switch is open means what the switch was closed before T equal to 0. So we have to take the value of zero conditions as t equal to zero minus the switch was closed. When the switch was closed, naturally the current is passing through the switch because it's a short circuit wire. And no current will be passing through the passive element that is especially inductor or resistor. So here the initial conditions across inductor of current is zero as well as the voltage across this inductor will also be zero. Now when the switch was closed, uh, before t equal to 0, this is how the circuit looks like. So here you can see at t equal to 0 minus the current is passing through the switch. So the current will be passing through the switch. So the voltage developed across two Henry's as well as the current through two Henry's will be 0 because this current was, won't pass through inductor or resistor. In fact, it's a closed circuit. That's why the 12 milliampere will flow through the switch because it is the shortest path and that is why current is zero in inductor. Once the current is zero in the inductor, naturally the voltage developed across inductor or the voltage developed across resistor will be zero and that is how we got I of zero minus is equal to zero and V of zero minus is equal to zero. This analysis is important and we know that the current through inductor cannot change instantaneously. So what will be the condition before switching the same condition persist after the switching. So I of 0 plus will also be 0. I hope you got this point why I of 0 minus is equal to 0 and similarly why I of 0 plus is equal to 0. Once this basis is obtained, we can further simplify the circuit. So as soon as the switch in the network is open, now this switch which is open the inductor acts as open circuit. This is the actual behavior of the inductor. So inductor acts as open circuit as soon as the switch is open. So if that is true, this is how the circuit looks like. So as soon as the switch is open, the inductor it becomes open circuit. And this is the practical circuit which is remaining that is 12 milliampere. It is going to flow through 50 ohms. In fact, we can easily find out the value of voltage across 50 ohms. So voltage will be 50 multiplied with 12 millivolts. So this will be giving you the value as 0 0.6 volts. So unlike the current conditions, the voltage conditions here have changed. So V of 0 minus is 0, whereas V of 0 plus is 0 0.6 volts. So this is the important factor we need to keep in our mind while solving the network, especially with this particular problem. 
Now for the time t greater than 0, this circuit changes to figure 1c, that is this circuit. Means what? Now 12 milliampers is there, that is giving its supply to 50 ohm resistor as well as 2 henrys. Now current will be flowing in 2 henrys and naturally we need to find out the voltage across these two passive elements. So I can change this circuit to this circuit. Since it's a parallel circuit, so I am taking a common node point and I am identifying as voltage V. Now that is the voltage which is parallelly applied to these three parameters. One current source parallel to 50 ohms as well as 2 hundreds. I hope you have understood how the circuit have been derived for T greater than 0. Now once we have obtained figure 1c. Now we have to derive the, the circuit with the help of node equations. In fact, we have to apply node analysis at point V. So you can see 12 milliampers it is an incoming current. V by 50 it is an outgoing current. And you have another current which is flowing in 2 Henry's. What is that current? So you can see minus 12 milliampers it is incoming current. V by 50 it is outgoing current and you have two Henry's and the current which is traveling in through it. So you can get the derivation for current as 1 by 2 integration V dt. Since the formula is 1 by L integration V dt. So that is how we got this relation. Now once we have framed this equation, we know that V of 0 minus is 0. Whereas V of 0 plus, we got some numerical. So we know what is value of V of 0 plus. Now we have to obtain the value of dV by dt at t equal to 0. So I am going to differentiate this equation 1. The constant minus 12 milliampere derivation it is 0. Then you have V by 50. So it becomes 1 by 50 times dV by dt. Because we are differentiating this equation 1. And differentiation of integration leads to 1 by 2 V which is equal to 0. So once we have framed this equation at t equal to 0 plus we have to derive dV by dt. So dV by dt at 0 plus which is equal to, be equal to see this 1 by 2 V on the left hand side which goes to it becomes minus 1 by 2 V of 0 plus because it is a t equal to 0 plus condition. Now this 50 when it goes to the other side it becomes minus 50 by 2. In fact it becomes minus 25 times. What is the value of V of 0 plus we got? We got the value of V of 0 plus as 0 0.6. So substituting the values we are going to get the value for dV by dt at 0 plus is equal to minus 50 volts per second. So this is how we need to solve the problem for dV by dt at t equal to 0 plus for parallel circuit. Now once we have obtained the value of dv by dt at 0 plus, again we are going to differentiate equation 2 because we need to find out d square v by dt square at t equal to 0 plus. So I am differentiating equation 2, I am going to get 1 by 50 d square v by dt square plus 1 by 2 dv by dt equal to 0. Right? Now at t equal to 0 plus, d square v of 0 plus by dt square it is equal to minus 50 by 2 dv of 0 plus by dt. This equation 4 is reframed and we have substituted t equal to 0 plus. So this equation is derived from equation 4. Now once this derivation is done just substitute the value of dv by dt at 0 plus. What is the value? Minus 15 volts per second. So 50 by 2 is minus 25 because it is minus over here that's why minus and dv by dt at 0 plus we got the value as minus 15 volts per second. So just substituting a value I'm going to get the value as 375 volts per second square. So this is how we solve the parallel circuit when resistor and inductor are placed in parallel applied to a current source. Now with small alterations. I have taken current source as 6 amperes, the same switch is placed over here. Resistor is changed to 500 ohms and instead of inductor we have 12 
millifarads so this is the value of capacitance and we need to find out the v dv by dt d square v by dt square at t equal to 0 plus so what we have to do so when the switch is open at t equal to 0 plus so before that the switch was closed so when the switch was closed the current is passing through the switch that is understood because it's a short circuit and no voltage will be developed across capacitor that is understood because the entire current is passing through the switch so naturally the current condition and the voltage conditions uh, before the switch was opened are completely zeros so you can see the voltage is not developed across 12 millifarad sorry uh, millifarad because the current is passing through the switch okay then we know that the voltage across capacitor cannot change instantaneously so naturally whatever will be the value of voltage before switching that is 0 volts will be equivalent to the voltage after switching that is also 0 volts so these two points we need to keep in mind when we are dealing with capacitor done now as soon as the switch is open capacitor acts as short circuit that is the behavior of the capacitor and you can see this is how the circuit looks like. So the switch is open, 6 amperes it is flowing, we have 500 ohms, but the capacitor is short circuited. When the capacitor is short circuited, V of 0 plus, as I told you, will be is equal to 0. So naturally, this circuit reduces to the same circuit because it's a short circuit path, all the switch conditions and the resistance conditions goes off, and that is why V of 0 plus is equal to 0, and the current condition is also 0. So this is shown in figure 2b. So what we have got the analysis, V of 0 minus is 0, V of 0 plus is 0, I of 0 minus is 0, I of plus is also 0. Now for time t greater than equal, sorry, greater than 0, not equal to, the circuit changes to this. So you have 6 amperes, switch is completely open, so we need not of taking this switch. We have 500 ohms and we have 12 millifarads. In fact, this circuit changes to this. So again, we are going to apply node analysis at this particular node. In the previous case, we have inductor. Now we have the capacitor. So we are going to apply the node analysis that is applying KCL at this particular node. So minus 6 amperes, which is coming towards the node V. And V by 500, that is the current which is flowing in 500 ohms. And you have 12 millifarads. So, C dv by dt, C value is 12 millifarads, dv by dt is equal to 0. So, this we are treating as equation 3 and rearranging the values of the given equation. I have 12 millifarads, so 12 into 10 to the power of minus 3, dv by dt is equal to 6 minus V by 500. So, this I am rearranging equation 3 and I am framing as equation 4. Now, at t equal to 0 plus, because we need to find out dv by dt at 0 plus. So this changes, this equation 4 changes to this particular equation. And simplifying this, I'm going to get dv by dt at 0 plus is equal to 6 times. This is 12, 10 to the power of minus 3, it goes in the denominator of 6. So it becomes 12. And you have 10 to the power of minus 3 in the denominator goes to the top, it becomes 10 to the power of 3. Similarly, we here we have minus V by 500 at 0 plus. So, V by 500 and it has to denote, denominate it has to be divided by 12 milli. So, 12 milli changes to 10 to the power of 3, 500 as it is. We know that from equation 2 that V of 0 plus is 0. So, V of plus 0 is 0. So, therefore, this value goes to 0 and I am going to left out with dv by dt at 0 plus is equal to 500 volts per second. So, very careful inspection you have to make in order to see through that dv by dt at 0 plus is equal to 500 volts per second. We are treating this equation as fine. Then I am taking the same equation that is equation 4 rearranged in this fashion and this equation is changed into this fashion and I am going to differentiate equation 4 which is rearranged in this fashion. So I am going to get as d square v by dt square, this is the constant value, that's why it is 0, minus this 10 to the power of 3 divided by 12 into 500 will give you the value as 1000 divided by 12 into 500, 
So this becomes 1 by 6 dv by dt. This v is there, that's why it is dv by dt. This we are treating as equation 6. And once equation 6 is obtained, now it is easy for us to obtain d square v by dt square at t equal to 0 plus value, which is nothing but the same equation, change it to this. And we know that from equation 5, we got the value of dv by dt at 0 plus is equal to 500 volts per second. Just substitute the value over here. So minus 1 by 6 times 500, which will be giving the value as minus 83.33 volts per second square. So there is no hurry to understand typical problems. So that's why I have selected two basic numericals in order to understand the parallel behavior of the circuit under transient analysis. So that is why we have selected RL and RC with current source because it's a parallel circuit. That's why we have selected as a current source. With this, you'll be having basic knowledge how to solve the problem for inductor and capacitor under transient analysis for parallel circuit. So I hope you like this particular video. Please share among your friends, subscribe to my channel and please press the bell icon for the future notifications. Thank you.